Hello and welcome to the Weekly Outlook at XM.com. Next week, investors will be eyeing the first PMI readings of 2023 to gauge recessionary risks. And in terms of central bank meetings, the Bank of Canada is up next. Will the BOC hike one final time? I'm Maria Pachardes, and joining me to discuss all this is lead investment analyst Rafi Boyajian. So Rafi, let's begin over in Canada, where inflation peaked back in June. What's the situation like today? And do you think the Bank of Canada is likely to raise rates again when it meets on Wednesday? Well, Maria, that is right when you say that inflation has peaked in Canada. The problem is, uh, since the summer, inflation has been hovering um, uh, just below 7%. And uh, even more worrying is the fact that underlying measures of inflation uh, in Canada uh, have pretty much stayed flat. So we've yet to see uh, a downward uh, path uh, for underlying inflation. And that would be, of course, a worry for uh, the Bank of Canada. Uh, so although at the last meeting, policymakers uh, did signal that another rate hike uh, is certainly not guaranteed, um, most likely they will go ahead with one additional rate hike of uh, 25 basis points. Uh, because, of course, other than the fact that inflation um, you know, has is not say convincingly on a downward trend just yet. Um, the jobs market in Canada remains uh, very tight, so that's another reason uh, for the Bank of Canada to be uh, to remain uh, cautious. Uh, the problem now for the Canadian dollar uh, is that even if they do raise rates, uh, it's questionable uh, whether the loonie would get uh, any lift from this because uh, they're probably going to again. Uh, signal uh, that further rate hikes uh, are not uh, a certainty and uh, in the uh, more dovish scenario where they outright signal that they're done with rate hikes, uh, that would of course weigh on the loonie. Moving to the US now, the Fed doesn't seem to be done with rate hikes as there are real worries about an upcoming recession. A bunch of data will come out next week, including the flash S&P Global PMI readings on Tuesday fourth quarter GDP on Thursday, and the core PCE price index on Friday. What are we expecting and how might the dollar be affected? So we've got quite a bit of data coming out of the US uh, and looking at the forecast, it's going to be a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, so it's hard to say just how the dollar uh, will respond to all this. Um, now, um, the risk of recession are certainly rising in the US. Uh, I mean, uh, there were clear hopes that the US was headed for a soft landing. Uh, now that's not looking quite as certain because the Fed uh, remains determined to get interest rates uh, above 5%. Uh, markets are not convinced, markets don't buy what the Fed uh, is saying. Uh, and uh, that, you know, this uh, divergence between market view and the Fed uh, increased uh, recently from the, when we had that, uh, you know, pretty poor ISM service PMI and poor retail sales uh, as well. Uh, now we might get some upbeat numbers uh, next week from the GDP, the first estimate of uh, fourth quarter to GDP numbers and also durable goods might be quite uh, positive as well. Uh, but uh, investors might pay more attention to the S&P Global PMIs, whether uh, they're going to deteriorate further uh, for January um, and also the PC data, which includes uh, personal spending and consumption. Uh, consumption uh, is likely, uh, ex is, it's expected to have slowed in December. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the core PC inflation data, uh, which is, of course, very important for the Fed. Um, uh, what's that going to be like? Is it going to um, continue to moderate? Uh, so the dollar might have a hard time making sense of all this. Um, and in fact, uh, you know, the overall picture might not change much uh, and investors might instead Instead, look to the earnings season, uh, which now this is something that uh, markets or investors, equity investors haven't really uh, fully priced in, you know, the prospect of the U.S. economy, uh, you know, entering a sharp uh, recession. Uh, so we're going to have, for example, uh, earnings from Tesla and Microsoft next week. So this uh, you know, what we get from the earnings might, in fact, uh, play a bigger role in terms of setting the tone for broader market sentiment. Uh, because if we get a disappointment there, uh, then that would uh, really, um, you know, uh, put a major dent uh, in risk appetite. Taking a look at the Eurozone and the UK now, their flash PMIs will be released on Tuesday. Are they in a similar boat regarding the risk of a recession? 
And what about the outlook for their respective currencies? Well, that's been really what's uh, kind of been interesting to see both in the euro and the pound lately. Uh, the fact that uh, recent data, although uh, we're clearly seeing, uh, you know, continuation of uh, this, uh, you know, the energy crisis having a negative impact on both the UK uh, and the eurozone economies. Uh, overall, it, it's looking like maybe uh, the energy crisis uh, has started to fade because of the mild winter we're getting uh, across Europe. Um, of course, we're not out of the woods yet, uh, but uh, it's, things aren't turning out quite as dire as many had predicted. Uh, and the recent PMIs have also been somewhat better than uh, anticipated. And so if we see further improvement in December, uh, even if we see um, you know, the business activity contracting uh, in the early parts of January, uh, that could still uh, you know, be seen as something positive for the markets because now we, we're in a situation where uh, the Eurozone and the UK are performing somewhat better than anticipated, whereas the US economy is now starting to struggle more. Uh, on top of that, the Bank of England and but the ECB uh, are saying that further rate hikes are needed. And although the Fed is uh, saying the same, uh, markets uh, are not quite convinced from what they're hearing from the Fed. So this has really uh, been a game changer for the, the euro as well as the pound. Although the, the, for the UK economy, there are some other risks uh, that investors are still worried about. Uh, the UK economy's uh, longer term outlook is somewhat more questionable compared uh, to the eurozones. Uh, but overall, um, you know, uh, the, the data uh, might uh, further buoy uh, the, the European currencies next week. And finally, both Australia and New Zealand will release CPI data on Wednesday. What should traders look out for there? Well, uh, so if we start looking first uh, with uh, Australia, the Reserve Bank of Australia is uh, somewhat in a similar position with as the Bank of Canada that is considering pausing uh, its rate hikes. Uh, but when we got the, uh, the, rec the November CPI data out of Australia, it showed uh, an unexpected uptick uh, in inflation. Uh, and when we get uh, the quarterly data next week, uh, we should see CPI rising again, hitting 7.5% uh, in the fourth quarter. Uh, so if we get an inline figure or even stronger than that, uh, this is likely to push up bets of the RBA hiking uh, by 25 basis points uh, in December, uh, sorry, in February, uh, rather than pausing. And that would, of course, be positive for the Australian dollar. Now, for New Zealand, we might actually see uh, CPI rate easing slightly to 7.1% uh, in the fourth quarter of 2022. Uh, and this could prompt investors to slightly pair back rate high expectations for the RBNZ, uh, but probably not uh, to a huge uh, extent because the RBNZ has remained quite hawkish uh, throughout um, you know, this uh, period where inflation uh, has started to uh, level off. Uh, and uh, policymakers in New Zealand will probably uh, plow ahead with rate hikes, regardless of what we get with the inflation data. Uh, so unless, of course, we get any big downside surprises, uh, the New Zealand dollar should remain well supported. Rafi, thanks so much. And thanks for joining us for this weekly outlook here at XM.com.